What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, episode number 14. And uh, today guys we start the episode off with uh, David Fox, uh, one of our CMs which we've barely even used. And uh, the Fox, well what does the Fox say? <laughs> That's another joke there, which we've already used before. Recycle material. What does the fox say? He says he's off to Bolton. He says I'm I'm fed up with staying here at Norwich. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not getting anything here, so um, I'm off to Bolton. And um, I don't think the fox said anything, but there you go. He must say uh, he's fed up with not getting used. But uh, anyway, the fox is off to Bolton, and maybe he'll open his mouth a bit more there. But uh, yeah, he's off to the Reebok Stadium, and uh, he's the first player we have that leaves uh, before his contract runs out. If that makes sense. So um, there you go. It's uh, it's it's. A, I don't think it was in. FIFA 13. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it was in FIFA 13, but uh, it's a pretty cool feature, isn't it, to have that, and uh, yeah, the Fox is going to Bolton, and uh, I'm not too bothered, like I say, he didn't open his mouth enough, and uh, the Fox is off to Bolton, and um, that's fine, we don't really use him anyway, so... And it does mean I can stop with these terrible, terrible jokes, so I do apologise. But uh, anyway, we take on West Ham for the first game of the episode here. Uh, taking on Sam Allardyce's men here in London. And I was looking forward to this game, mainly because I'm a Millwall fan and I really want to beat West Ham. Guru West Ham, but uh, you're taking on West Ham here. But uh, unfortunately for us, you saw in the last episode, we took on Spurs in the Capital One Cup. And just a couple of days after, we had a Premier League game against West Ham. And I thought to myself, you know, I will play the side again. We make a couple of changes. Hooper came in and Snodgrass came in, I think it was. We made a couple of changes. But we put out pretty much the exact same team that beat uh, Spurs in the Capital One Cup semi-final first leg. But um, even so, as you can probably see by the stamina bar in the bottom right, the players were really, really unfit. They were very, very tired, and I should have shown it at the start. I do apologise, but the side was really unfit. They were very tired, and uh, unfortunately, West Ham were playing on that. They really were. They were stretching us out wide. They were, uh, they were using the pace. They were making us really, really tired. You know, tiring the legs down, and uh, the players were very unfit. And unfortunately for us, that's why they went two 0 up here, and uh, we. We just could not get into the game at all. Gary Hooper was one of the very few players that came in with completely fresh legs, but uh, he wasn't performing well, and the whole side was just, you know, completely, completely unfit and tired, and uh, it's just one of those problems, really, when we're playing so well in the Capital One Cup, you know, we've had such an amazing run, it does mean we need to rotate the squad, and uh, we don't have a big enough squad to play a completely backup side in the Premier League, so, um, yeah, unfortunately, we were just completely getting dicked on, and uh, West Ham were playing too good for us, and they were tuning it up here, and we just could not get going in this game at all. Uh, our best chance basically fell in injury time and try and get a consolation goal and Robert Snodgrass rolled the ball out wide to Johan Elmanda and uh, Elmanda's shot was well saved by Adrian and uh, the ball ended up getting cleared. It was cleared away only as far as Leroy Thur. He found Bradley Johnson who found Nathan Redmond here. Redmond takes aim uh, from just outside the area but again Adrian makes a brilliant save and uh, unfortunately for us we just didn't get going. I mean like I say I, I blame the fitness. I mean of course I didn't play well. I take responsibility for it. I didn't play well but um, even so I blame the fitness. It, it was just all over the place really I mean you know to have a game two days after beating uh, Spurs in the Capital One Cup semi-final first leg I knew we'd need to make some changes and I take responsibility I didn't make those changes and I paid the price for it so uh, yeah terrible terrible thinking for me terrible management terrible rotation and uh, unfortunately it's a terrible result a 2-0 loss away from home at West Ham and that is very frustrating indeed but uh, we get another international management offer this time it's from Poland and um, again it's one of those nations where I'm thinking oh god I just I don't know I mean you know maybe it could be fun but I'm not sure and uh, we still have another four there Australia Czech Republic uh, Norway I think it is and um, what's the other nation oh god I can't remember Australia Czech Republic Norway and Venezuela there you go um, but we actually go ahead and reject the Venezuela offer but um, even so we do have a couple of offers here but um, I'm thinking about it and you know I, I don't think I'll take any of them but we'll see but um, we get a transfer offer for uh, Callan McFadden one of our young centre backs Wickham want to take him on loan so he's on his way to Adams Park which is fine with me we never used him and we never will with attributes like that so he's on his way to Adams Park and uh, we also get um, a player conversation here and this is some really really bad news because it's John Ruddy who has been uh, wanted by several Several clubs since the start of the series and he says I'm really sorry but I come to the realization I cannot stay at this club any longer I want to be transferred so this is really frustrating because Ruddy is an incredible goalkeeper he's our best player in the whole squad and it's just unbelievably frustrating because I don't want to get rid of Ruddy I mean who he would want to get rid of Ruddy he's such an amazing goalkeeper and um, it's such a big shame but it looks as though we're gonna have to be forced to sell him but uh, even so whilst he's still at the club we'll play him in as many games as possible and try and show him that the fans love him you know, and uh, you know we, we want to keep hold of him. But uh, even so, as you can see here, I mean, I should have showed this in the first episode, uh, first game against West Ham. The squad is just completely dying in terms of fitness. We need to make big, big changes. So uh, that's exactly what we do here against Hull. <coughs> we put out like basically a completely backup side, really. 
I think we had a couple of first team players starting, but uh, other than that, the, the whole side was a complete backup side because the, the squad is just going down. You know, as soon as a player goes into the light green of fitness, I don't want to play him. And uh, unfortunately, that was a problem against West Ham. So uh, in this game, I, I made sure I wasn't going to make those mistakes again, and I would rest pretty much the entire side, other than Garrido. Uh, sorry, other than uh, John Ruddy. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much a completely backup side. And uh, also Yaya Sanogo gets a game here as well, and uh, I haven't really played him. Um, we signed him on loan from Arsenal. We haven't really played him, and uh, a couple of you have been saying, give him a game. So I was like, okay, fine, he can play in this one. But uh, even so, we take on Hull in this game. Uh, we take on Hull, Steve Bruce's men, uh, coming to Carrow Road. And uh, after that disappointing game against West Ham, I was thinking we should be able to get three points here. You know, no disrespect to Hull. They're not on an amazing side. They're doing okay, but they're not on an amazing side. And uh, I felt as though we could beat Steve Bruce's men here uh, as they came to Carrow Road and get ourselves back to winning ways. We've got the uh, the uh, second leg of the Capital One Cup semi-final against Spurs on. The, uh, in the week, in the week, so um, you know we want some motivation for this game uh, of a win here. But uh, Hull had the first chance. Danny Graham, he just can't seem to score, can he? Danny Graham couldn't put the ball in the back of the net there, so still nil nil. But it was a game of very few chances. Not much happened at all in this game. And in the 74th minute, the next chance came about when Cameron Stewart picked the ball up here for Hull and rolled the ball out wide to Boyd. He found Huddleston. Huddleston's shot was brilliantly saved by Morrison. It came back inside to Boyd. His header was greatly saved by John Ruddy. But there is Tom Huddleston. It's time to share the afro mate Huddleston gets the goal and puts the ball past John Ruddy and makes it Norwich nil hole one it was looking like back to back defeats but I brought on Elmanda Iber and Townsend so we bring on a triple substitution here just try and get ourselves a, a route back into this game I'll take a draw after a disappointing performance here but it's Elmanda who crosses the ball in it comes to the on loan Liverpool youngster and it's a first Premier League goal for this man Jordan is it Iber or Ibe I don't know how you pronounce it but it's a, a first goal for the on loan Liverpool man the former Wickham man gets the goal equalises in the 89th minute and we are bailed out by the young I think he's 17 or 18 year old so um, a very very clinical finish from the teenager it only just came off the bench only had a couple of chances before rifling the ball into the back of the net so I was very very pleased that he managed to rescue us a point after a terrible terrible performance but uh, again Australia come back to us another nation they say you know what's going on we haven't heard from you so we're not going to be taking Australia sorry to my Australian fans I know I've got a lot of you but um, sorry not going to take Australia but um, how about this the board come to us and say we've decided to sell John Ruddy it's not in the best interest of the club to keep here any longer please ensure this happens I was like oh for Christ's sakes Delia seriously he is an amazing goalkeeper but unfortunately my hands are tied I've got no say in this John Ruddy has to leave the club and I'm just absolutely livid because he's an amazing goalkeeper and uh, unfortunately the board want to sell him and uh, I have been told that if you don't uh, make the board's wish come true and if you don't sell him and you keep hold of him the board will sell him on the cheap so that's why we're offering for 3.5 million because that's not bad for John Ruddy but um, even so it's you know the, the one thing I don't want to see is the board selling behind our back and he goes for something like two million where we can get another one and a half million so you know we, we may be underselling him but I feel as though we have to take this because we can't take the risk and um, see him leave on a cheap so um, Ruddy looks as though he's on his way to either Catania is it Catania um, or, or Ajax uh, for 3.5 million pounds because they both come back to us here as you can see there um, and both accept the deal <clears throat> accept the counter offer. Uh, Australia is in the, uh, uh, the offer for us to manage their nation, which is fine because you know, again, sorry to my Australian fans, I know I've got a lot of you, but um, I wasn't really that interested, only Timmy Cahill was making me think, maybe Australia, but uh, no, we're going to wait for a while, but uh, yeah John Ruddy is on his way to either Catania uh, or Ajax, Bill Bow also came for John Ruddy, which was interesting, because I didn't think that would be allowed, but um, I don't know, maybe EA don't know the ruling there, but uh, anyway um, yeah, Catania and uh, Bill uh, so Catania and Ajax uh, accept a 3.5 million counter offer, so he's on his way to either Catania or uh, Ajax and we'll have to replace him, uh, the first goalkeeper I'm thinking of is Jack Butland uh, young English good potential but um, we'll have to wait and see but um, yeah as you can see here uh, John Ruddy does indeed get sold he's on his way and he's going to Catania for 3.5 million pounds such a disappointment but my hands were tired I couldn't do much about it and that is the end of that uh, transfer saga and as always guys a big thank you for watching today's video I hope you enjoyed it if you have please leave a like and I'll see you for the next episode of career mode very soon <laughs>